don't come out of butts. Everyone knows, but nobody talks about it. Cause poop comes out of butts. Comes out of butts. Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Well, Dan, welcome to Drinking Bros. Welcome to Drinking Bros. We've done a lot on this show. Uh, by a lot, I mean pretty much everything you can imagine in this life, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, between the five of us, six of us. Over time, yeah. O- over time. Between the six of us, uh, let's, we'll start with Black Rifle Coffee was created. Yep. This podcast was created. Ross Patterson Revolution podcast was created. Range 15 was created. Another movie called Drinking Bros Live, the Shaved Eagle Tour, was created. A whiskey company uh, that's on our back shelf over there. I'm going to pop on out to that wide. Uh, Lead Slinger's Whiskey was created. <laughs> and also, we became New York Times bestselling authors. What else is there left to do except for run for politics? Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> once you've achieved everything in life... Um, you're a father. Yes. I probably am. Yes. Uh, or you will be someday. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, that's pretty much all that's left is to run for office, to satiate our egos, which are massive, by the way. Huge, huge egos. Uh, we can't help it. No. So it is what it is. So we're, we're, we're going to have to run for office. I feel like Clint Eastwood at this point, where Clint just said, fuck it, I've made a million movies, might as well become mayor of Carmel. Yeah, if you don't know what Carmel is, it's the (laughs) richest and whitest city in America. Uh, They have the weirdest law. Dogs are allowed everywhere. But you can't really wear heels if you're a woman because there's cobblestone streets still. Yeah. It's a very bizarre place, but very nice as well. Very nice. Beautiful this time of year. It's beautiful Uh, every time. Every single second of the year. Cake job. (laughs) And it's one of those where when Clint Eastwood dies, you'll be like, oh, man, Academy Award winner. And uh, he was also mayor uh, of his own town <clears throat> one time. Now, ours is a little different. Uh, our second highest downloaded episode of the year was when I went scorched earth against the school board for New Hanover County. Mm-hmm. I've been going back and forth with these fucks for a while now and still haven't changed anything. We're down to the, the last few weeks of it. And I, look, I'll, I'll just I'll be blunt with you. You and I have been mulling this over for a while now. We're, we're actually going to run for the Board of Education, and we're going to do it together, which is allowed in this city. Yeah. So we're, we're allowed to campaign together. We're allowed to do all of our events together. We're allowed to essentially help each other get into office. There is three seats available on the new Hanover Board of Education for 2020. And who are those people? Uh, I, will, I will read them off right now. Uh, David Wartman is up. Uh, no, I, I, I believe I like that guy. Well, you, you wait and then let me know about that. Uh, Lisa Estep uh-huh. is up. And then one more. I believe it's Jeanette Nichols. Uh, yeah, I believe it's Jeanette Nichols. Jeanette's, uh, she's, a, she's a little older gal. Um, so I don't know if I want to go hard <clears throat> against Jeanette. I will. I don't think my grandmother's name was Jeanette. I, I think one of the problems in America right now in general <laughs> is old people. <laughs> I knew this is coming from you. Draining our resources. Yeah. Yeah. Right? They don't and have children they're, they're in, all, in the school district. They're casting their opinion from a time of irrelevance. Yeah. Right? That shit doesn't exist anymore. This <clears throat> this boomer, okay boomer, by the way, is dead already. Uh this boomer fucking mentality is gone. It doesn't fit in the modern world. Get the fuck out of here. Right? Yeah. Um, and then people, she's probably been on the board for like 90 years. You know, there was, it's <laughs> funny. So I, I've done a lot of research on this. And ironically, our paperwork is due December 3rd, which is the same day they're making the redistricting decision. Um, and a lot of people uh, have been on a lot of these boards. And it's, it's strange, man. Like, because until you actually get into it. Mm-hmm really really dive into it you don't realize how many people have been sitting on all these boards for years and years and years. oh yeah uh, in every city and i think that's why this that particular episode we did resonated with so many people where yep. it's like <clears throat> hey man this is these are problems that's that that people are going through all across america 
However, their voice isn't big enough to be heard. Right. And so, therefore, they just kind of get fucked along the way. It happens a lot. Yeah, I think the worst thing for America is entrenched politicians. Yeah. And that's that's where the entire Trump Mm. doctrine came from, the drain the swamp. Well, we're going to drain the creek. We are. And and, and why are we draining the creek? This is the home of Dawson's Creek. This is where it was shot. This is where it was filmed. And One Tree Hill, by the way. One Tree Hill. Oh, don't even get me started on One Tree Hill. Jared's favorite show was One Tree Hill. Same. Or the OC, one of the two. Uh, one Tree Hill was mine. Uh, back in the day, it was, it was Dawson's Creek. And, and I said to myself after the first episode, where do they shoot that? Because it is gorgeous. Wilmington, North Carolina. Great. I want to live there someday. Mm-hmm. Uh, knew Vanderbeek a little bit through a friend of a friend. I got mm-hmm. to chat with him a few times. <laughs> he had a dope-ass place down by the river here. It was like, it's the greatest city ever. Uh, obviously know some of the folks from, from One Tree Hill. Mm-hmm. And uh, got a chance to chat with them. Uh, I got it rocked with one, one of the leads uh, in, in France, of all places. Um, great fucking guy. And <laughs> one of the leads on One Tree Hill. And I was like, hey, man, is Wilmington as amazing as it seems? And he was like, yeah, dude, it's, it's fucking incredible. So move here. Uh, go to the realtors and say, hey, man, find me a neighborhood that I will never, ever be redistricted. It happened to me twice as a kid. Yeah. Fucking sucked. And we're doing seven shows a week. We're trying to do more, by the way. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to fuck up my commute. And I, I was trying to figure out why. Because uh, I'm looking at all these maps and I'm like, man. Why they would redistrict. Yes. I mean, usually it's a classroom size kind of deal. Correct. And yeah. then uh, also there's busing issues. And if you're not familiar with the phrase busing, if you don't follow the news and shit, mm-hmm. um, it seems like that wire is in front of our camera. Is that, does that look like it is? Is it, Jamie? What do you think? Uh, at any you rate. You would be able to see it. Yeah. Great. You'd think you'd be able to see it. It looks ah. like it's, it's like directly in front of it. Uh, anyways, I'm super high, though, so who knows? Yeah. At any rate, I, and I'm running for office for school board. So yeah. uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> Being high <laughs> and what that's like so in busing, America. Busing yeah. no, I, is, and uh, I went through busing as well, by the way. Yeah, busing is like if there's incongruity. So if you have a poor school and a rich school and all the inner city uh, minority kids are going to the poor school and all the fucking suburb, suburban, you know, wealthier families are in the other school they'll bus people to the different schools to integrate people better it's part of uh uh what do you call it uh the fucking civil rights act yeah it all came out of that stuff brown versus board (laughs) yeah at any rate uh it happens for legitimate reasons sometimes this one it seems like there's a couple of people on the on the board who are going to benefit very greatly from that old white dude i don't know his name what's his name well so so here's the thing do uh do do a little show Mm-hmm. Um, with uh, Alex Jones called Infowars, and I talked about this, my, my problem on, on this. Uh, funny thing about Infowars, he's got about 36 million listeners. Uh, we've got 6.4 on this show. Uh, you think he's crazy. You think Alex Jones is crazy. And you're like, man, you go on Infowars, Ugh, it's, it's mm-hmm. going to be crazy. Weird thing is, people do feel compelled to send you information. A lot of people sent me the private emails and text messages of all the board members. Now, I've got to get these verified. They're over there. Right now, I've got to get these verified. Um, luckily, <laughs> we have some friends in some high places here uh, that can tell me if this is these are true. I, looking at them, I really don't have any reason to believe they aren't uh, at this point. But uh, the the one that stood out the most out of all of this was Bill Rivenbark. Now, Bill <laughs> Rivenbark. Rivenbark is a family name around here that's <laughs> yeah. tantamount to like uh, I don't know a uh, uh, Bush or Clinton. You know what I mean? Not not politically, so to speak, but I, I guess it would be more, sort of. It'd be more like Rockefeller. Like there's a lot of wealth in that name in this area of the country. Yeah, and it's odd <laughs> because the the name Rivenbark around here, they're not all related. However, there is a lot of known Rivenbarks. Like there's an mm-hmm. attorney, there's uh, someone else, and I was like, man, I can't, I kept seeing this name Rivenbark all over signs. Turns out uh, we got another lifer and his brother Charlie. Yeah, Charlie's been on the city council for. 20 something years at this point. Uh, Bill uh, happens, he was just a normal dude working on an ABC. That's it. Normal dude. Um, when I looked at the redistricting map, however, there was four neighborhoods that were about 1.3 miles south of me. So they got to drive 1.3 miles and then past my neighborhood and then to the elementary school that I'm supposed to go to. And I thought it seemed odd. Uh, one of these e- emails that was sent to me uh, said, Hey, man. Probably looking at Bill Rivenbark. <laughs> Turns out, Bill Rivenbark lives on Captain's Lane. Now, magically, as of today's date, his neighborhood 
and uh, the the three beyond it are in. Uh, he just started running. It, like, he just got elected the year before. Yep. He has a lot to gain with the property values going up there. And he does not have any children in school. He appears to be in his 60s, 60-year-old man, maybe 65-ish, maybe older. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he looks he's, good for his age. He's old. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so he's definitely going to benefit. He's going to benefit financially. Financially. And, and it, it, the, the other part of this is his brother, who is, uh, again, on city council. city council, Charlie, appears from these text messages and emails, who, who was the one who talked him into it and said, hey, man, you can just basically run off of name recognition, mm. get in. You don't really have to do anything because, you know, you were never in politics. You've never done anything before, but you can coast off that last name. And it turns yeah. out he was right. So it looks like, and again, we're not making any presumptions here because I don't know the guy. Uh, all I know is that he's clearly voting in his own best interest and has no, like nothing. Uh, uh, he doesn't have kids or anything, so it's not like an it's not a, it's not a an issues based vote for him. No, right? I he's got grandkids, but my my thing is this: right, you're so far south that when you look at these maps, it is impossible to say that you were unbiased in this uh, when clearly right. you had a fucking hand in this, Bill Rivenbark. Um, and the beauty of it is he's not up. So he's not up for re-election. So should he stay after all of this, you're going to be sitting next to the two of us for the next four years, two years, Bill, because I'll get you out of there in two. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll set God up God forbid fuck. our third co-host move here. We'll um, set up a super pack for whoever runs against him. Yeah. I'm going to talk about name recognition. Currently, Drinking Bros is number one in four states. North Carolina happens to be one of them. Yep. So... Look, man, uh, we're going to be going real hard over the next year. Here's what I think about politics. There's two reasons you should get in. One is that you're, uh, you care about the issues, mm -hmm. which is this. And, and this example, this is you. You have a child in that school. And about to have two. Because you can see from the ground level how these decisions at the, at the macro level affect day-to-day -day people, and that's an important perspective to have in politics. Mm -hmm. I, on the other hand, am dispassionate about the whole thing. None of this affects me. And I don't think you should be able to. You need a good balance of both of those things uh, on a governing body. You need people that are dispassionate and uninterested in the outcome, except for that the outcome is good for the most amount of people. Mm -hmm. And you need people who understand the day-to-day -day issues and what's going on on the ground. Now, that's why our Congress and Senate are so fucked. Because it's people <clears throat> who have been in office for 80 goddamn years. And they've made like a massive amount of wealth just by being a part of the government not from the government but by being a part of it, which is way worse i would rather the government pay them a fuckload of money than have them use their influence to make money in the private sector because that's corrupt as fuck yeah right the only way to defeat corruption is to have people like us on your fucking governing body yeah, and that's going to happen next year because uh, the part of this other redistricting <laughs> committee, and I'm I'm not psyched with this either, was they had a, a committee of 14 people. They were all white. Uh, some parents complained in July, and they threw in one black lady on there. Uh, a lot of a lot of correspondence going back and forth about that one as well. If we just add one, that will quell everybody's. Worries. No, no, it doesn't. It's 13 to 1. And that's not fair either because, let's face it, we do have black communities in Wilmington. Why you decided to pick 14 white people, I don't know. Uh, the other interesting part about all of these candidates who ran was they wanted to run on transparency. Every single one of them said, ah, we want to be transparent. We want to be transparent with our decisions. We want everybody to know what's going on. What's the first thing they did when they redistrict these schools? They hired an outside firm. From another state, Ohio. Which the one school board member we talked to mm -hmm. said he was against it. Like completely against that and got overruled on it. Which means there, there are forces at work here. There are. I, we think. Now again, <laughs> politicians will tell you everything. You don't really know unless you get in and you actually run and you actually win and get in there and see what's going on. Yep. The beauty of what we do for a living is we don't have to report to anybody. Nope. Uh, don't need to take anybody's <laughs> money. Um, don't, I don't need anything uh, other than the same exact neighborhood where I live, the same schools that are within two miles of my house, both elementary and middle. That's really all I need. I, I have all the friends I need mm -hmm. in this life. 
Uh, I love my children. Love my wife. I have, I'm not going anywhere. I have nothing else to do. We've moved our entire operation from San Antonio and Los Angeles to here. We have a 4,000 square foot studio. I'm not going anywhere, however you are. So we're going to get you off the fucking board. And there's nothing you can do about it. So the name recognition thing, Bill, I have a feeling that's going to come back to haunt you. Uh, we're going to throw a massive party here on the 3rd uh, for, for all the drinking bros the here. The 3rd of, uh, uh, of December, because okay. that's when the paperwork is due. And uh, you can come on by the studios. We're going to have an all-out rager. Uh, we're getting T-shirts made as we speak. And uh, that's the day our, our <clears throat> paperwork is due. Super Tuesday is what we're calling it. Yeah, it is. Super Tuesday. Or we can call it Get Fuck Tuesday. But either way, uh, it's going to be super for us. The, the, the other amazing thing is like <laughs> going through this. And again, I'm, I'm new to politics. Uh, you, you think you know until you actually get in mm -hmm. start going through the paperwork. You have to report like how much money you're doing and, and all that stuff. If it's over 1000 under 1000 well, uh, obviously it's going to be way more than 1000 Because we're going to shoot a lot of videos. Um, uh, well, we don't have, we only have to, uh, report stuff that we do outside of our own selves. So we'll, things that our editors do will be considered in kind donations yeah. or in, in kind contributions to our yeah. campaign, even if we pay them for them. The beauty of having your own 4,000 <laughs> square foot studio is, well, the possibilities are endless. Uh, and I have a feeling Morgan Freeman is going to be narrating <laughs> most of these videos about our children. It's time. We take the politics out of the school board. Madison Holloway, 2020. <laughs> it's going to be majestic. Uh, so we're, we're getting the T-shirts printed up soon. And uh, this, is, this is not happening anymore. The other, the other part about this is, is going through all these emails and text messages. And there's a lot. So forgive me. Uh, I'm, I'm still going through all of that shit now. Is, uh, is the hatred amongst one another uh, that they had for themselves. You're talking and, of the school board. Yeah, the school board themselves, right? Because <clears throat> you have to run as a Republican or a Democrat, which I didn't know. You can't run as an independent? I, I, I'll check on that. Because uh, I but, am not either one of those things. <laughs> the, 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 the beauty of it is um, it doesn't matter what we run as because we're going we're gonna to win no matter what because of the, the, uh, the audience members <clears throat> live, live in Wilmington. It by, by, by the, the way, way it, it Ryan Mark like, only got 4,000 votes, and that's all you need to win. So like, that's 4,000? That's not what I'm seeing. Yeah, what did you got? 44. Oh, at the end. Yeah, I'm talking about the primary. Oh, the primary. Yeah, yeah. primary is up first in March. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. No, nobody votes in, in primaries. No, um, they will now. They will now. Which is yes. going to be the fun part. Uh, I'm looking forward to all of this. <laughs> uh, not looking forward to my kids changing schools, but... Uh, Three incumbents last in the la lost in the last election. Yeah. Three incumbents yeah. ran and lost. Yeah. Uh, they were all... Uh, Republicans and Democrats took their spots. Repubes. No, Republicans will have a rise again. <clears throat> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run as I don't know yet. I'll yeah. pick something. You th think about it. I'll pick something weird. You think on it. The get fucked party. The, the Green Party. Yeah, maybe Green Party. Yeah. Maybe Green Party. Uh, It'd be nice to have a Green Party in there, right? <clears throat> Look, here's how I feel about the Green Party. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, you can't organize an entire political party around one idea, asshole. <laughs> well, they're trying. They are trying. <laughs> who, who went after? It was uh, Clinton. Hillary went after Jill Stein the other day. Oh, she's going after everybody right now. I didn't now. know Jill Stein was even alive and yeah, doing no stuff. No one knew that she was alive until Hillary Clinton said her name. Crazy. Uh, Hillary Clinton killed Epstein, by the way. Yeah, big time. Um, so, uh, yes, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Hey, I'm speaking of James Van Der Beek, Rules of Attraction. That's yes, a good movie. It is a great movie. A lot of people don't know this little fun trivia piece, but he was, so his name is Bateman, right, in mm -hmm. the show. He's... Uh, Patrick Bateman's little brother. Yes, from American Psycho. Yes. A lot of people don't know that, but that's a good little tidbit. Uh, and as one point in the movie, where he actually makes a phone call to a guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fucking great. We'll go watch that movie. So I, I got a funny story about this movie. Okay. Um, that was one of my favorite <laughs> scripts in L.A., and I was up for it. And so I, I called. I, I'd known the director through a friend, and I, I called and I was like, "Hey, man, uh, this fucking role, uh, the Kit Pardue role. Do you remember mm. the guy who goes overseas and films himself?" Uh, get, with all the Europeans doing drugs yeah. and all that other shit, like uh, Kit Pardue <laughs> ended up getting it. He was mm -hmm. coming off of Remember the Titans. I was like, oh, it's the greatest role ever. He's like, ah, oh, that one's cast. I was like, what else you got? Um, there was the kind of like the bitch role 
uh, that ended up going for, for the guy from American Pie. So that was the one I got, and he was on a scheduling conflict. And they were like, look, if he, if he comes back, he comes back. Everyone wanted to do that movie so bad yeah. that they came back and did it. Jessica <clears throat> Biel was in it. Um, that movie was it's you're, fucking you're, awesome. You're talking about rated. Rookie of the Year, right? Oh, yeah. Thomas E. Nichols? Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, dude, American <clears throat> Pie at that time, if you did American Pie, because I did a movie with Tara Reid, mm. anyone from American Pie got every single independent film finance yeah because they were big around the world and uh it, it didn't matter what role you had in american pie boom if you were in a movie congratulations it was coming out around the world i ended up doing a, a movie with tara reed the year after because of that and i, I and surprisingly like, like she was fucking awesome to work with i was surprised uh because usually i think yeah that'll be a fucking mess it was not it was actually a pleasant experience but uh, yeah, the movie was was a blast, and, and Vanderbeek, dude, yeah, he ended up selling that place uh, down by the it's river. It's too bad. Yeah, they're actually rebuilding it right now, aren't they? God, they're doing construction it's down there. The nicest that was, <laughs> that was the nicest condo in all of Omi, so. and he just used to crush pussy. Crush well, there's pussy. I a, did a a lot of people don't know this, and it's it's definitely not one of the reasons I moved where I moved. But there's three colleges within 20 minutes. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, it's a fucking joke. Like, like all of downtown is awesome. And like people are, it is. you were in a bar one night. Didn't they just keep it open to like four? Cause you just get, just because you guys were there. Yeah. I mean, it's rad. Uh, Vince Vaughn got arrested here <clears throat> at a, at a bar. Shit. You know where he got arrested was at uh, blue post. Oh, we nice. Played uh darts that night. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good spot. Great spot. I lo- uh, that's one of my favorite spots. But uh, Wilmington's one of those towns, man, where you come into town you're, and you're surprised at how, what a fucking blast it is. Because uh, you can get, just get lost downtown in all those bars. There's some speakeasies in the back alley. There's some underground bars. Uh, there's a military bar, by the way, on the corner of Market. Poorhouse. Yeah. It's a Marsock bar, yeah. 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 I, I drink there all the time. So. Because it's underground and it's like, look. You can... You whatever. can go hard. There. There's a here's what there's a lot of on the weekend. Uh, there's a lot of boots with their hair too high and entirely too tight. Mm. Uh, and then there's a lot of fat girls. Really? Yeah, because that's it's what surprising. No, Marines love fat ah, girls. Yeah, they're okay. trying to marry them right now. Somewhere right now, there's a Marine proposing to a fat woman. <laughs> like what? it's just Why is a, that? I don't know. You'll have to ask uh, White James, our fucking producer, about that. But. Uh, Hang on. That, it, it, here's why that's surprising. Is I don't, I don't know what you said. Oh, uh, they don't cheat <clears throat> cheat on you on deployment. Oh yeah, they do. They cheat and they eat all your food because they're fat. Really? Um, Jody's. Jody's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Marines have about two hundred thousand people, including reserves. I would say there's one guy at least that is either proposing to or getting ready to in the next week proposing to a fat woman. <laughs> There's no question about that. By the way, we're going to have Donnie O'Malley on the show again soon in the next couple yeah. of weeks. And yeah. he can, we'll, we'll is he coming him. into Wilmington? Yeah. Great. Well, he's actually going <clears> – <throat> when I get the actual dates and information, I'll, I'll shout it out on the show. Um, but he's coming in to brag to do a live show. Mm. And he's going – it's the night after we do our speaking engagement there. Okay. Then he's going to Jacksonville to do a live show at Lejeune. Then he's going to come down here and we're going to record. Great. Great. I know Donnie's been going <laughs> through it with his movie. Yeah, so they have a new movie coming out. Did they get banned <laughs> from Amazon? Yeah. Uh, it's like... Oh, I, were they I don't, fucking I, a dead Iraqi body or something? Yeah, Donnie and Jared. Uh, that's right. I remember they were yeah. filming that. <clears throat> so remember Jared called me afterwards as a gay man. I just fucked a dead Iraqi it's body. Called, yeah, it's called A Grunt's Life. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, Donnie's character, it's, it, it's basically the story, uh, it's like a dark, irreverent comedy about the fucked up minds of people in combat, particularly grunts. And this is a Marine infantry unit. I think they're in Afghanistan. <coughs> and um, all kinds of weird shit happens, right? Donnie's collecting ears on a necklace. Yeah. Uh, he, he goes to his bunk and he's got a fucking uh, dead dude's arm in there and he uses it to jerk off. Uh, he hangs dong, so you see his dick. If you want to see Donnie O'Malley's dick, you can see really? it. Really? Oh, yeah. It's a bold move. It is, yeah. Uh, he and like it. He and Jared uh, fuck a dead uh, Afghani, I believe, together. Mm-hmm. So a lot of weird shit happens. Um, let's see. I'm a fan of Donnie. Uh, I, I, I like Donnie, man. I, I like Vet TV, and their content just keeps getting better and better. The series that Jack Mandeville did on Vet, Vet TV, well, he's a, that he, was so kind of like in the vein of The Office. Yeah, the two of them. So it's called The Shop. It's God really good. It, it's good. It's really good. Um, and then there's... Uh, I think they had one of the directors. Check, Checkpoint Charlie as well is really good. Yeah, yeah. they did. They did. Yeah. Um, 
So A Grunt's Life is the name of the movie. It's available now, actually. You can go to agruntslife.com okay. and find that shit. Uh, it's, it's really fucking funny. Is it really? Yes. Dude, I can't wait to see it. What, what other avenues is it on? Is it on iTunes? Uh, no. I, don't, uh, I, don't, I actually don't know. If you go to agruntslife.com, it'll tell you all the places where it's available. You know, that's I, where they're sending all their traffic. I think I think it was going <clears> to <throat> go through Distributor, which is what our last movie did. I think Distributor fu- fell they went, through. They, yeah. they went bankrupt. I just did an, uh, an interview with those guys. Yeah, so they didn't. They didn't. Anywhere. They didn't even let anybody know. No, they like, left in the middle of the night. Uh, it's classic Hollywood, though. Donnie and and their CMO John Acevedo were just kind of hanging out, mm-hmm. waiting for these guys to respond to them, and they didn't respond. It'd been like two weeks. Like what the fuck? Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, they saw in the news or something. Oh, they're out of business. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. thanks for sending out a, at least a mass email to your mailing list. Hey, like, we, we out. Yeah. Something. Yo, we gone. Like we even, gone, fam. Even that SpongeBob mean, all right, I'm going to head out, would have yeah. been better than, than <laughs> nothing they did for everybody. They went <clears> boiler room <throat> style. Uh, they left in the middle of the night. So I get a call from IndieWire, which is one of the uh, probably the top independents. Mm-hmm film magazine in the business out there and uh they were like hey man uh we know you'll do an interview and i was like yeah i will and then they told me the story yeah and they said <laughs> boom middle of the night uh people came in the next day and it was boiler room style where it was just they had taken everything uh and everything else um but the movies have stayed here's the weird part mm-hmm. right so the movies have stayed on itunes and they're in bankruptcy now we're in a fucking lawsuit for one of them and uh I, they're stuck there there's nothing you can do so I, I don't. I'm I'm curious to see. Like, what there's nobody that has any power to pull it the down. password Correct. to the account to go in. I mean, it's Correct. it's really that simple. Like, no one has the password, and S- iTunes won't give it to you unless you can verify that you're the owner of the yes. account. And no one's ever going to do that. So I got a letter <clears throat> two days ago from uh, the the whoever is taking over the the mm-hmm. debt and the bankruptcy for this this company, and they were like, "Hey, we're freezing your films for 12 months mm-hmm. or whatever it is, so we can sort this out." And then see what they have and haven't paid you, and we have to verify it and whatever. And you're like, ah, nobody's getting paid off that. Uh, but the movie's stuck up there forever. So, like, <laughs> let's say something really fucked up happened, right? Yeah. Um, they, you know, somebody died in the movie. Nothing you can do about it. Yeah. It stays. <laughs> yeah. It stays on iTunes. Like People if just it, rent it. Like if it was a fucking, if it was a, uh, a snuff film, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's it. that's it. It's that's just it. up there forever. It stays up there forever. Unless man. they go in and take it down, obviously. But, yeah. you know, honestly, would they? Because it's, I don't know, brings man. a lot of something crazy like that would bring in a lot of traffic. That's a why lot. I don't understand why Amazon would give them shit about putting it. Look, what they did in the show is no worse. And, and Range 15, which is on Amazon right now, mm-hmm. uh, the, the midget from Pirates of the Caribbean runs up to Evan Hafer, the yeah. CEO of yeah, yeah. the largest e commerce coffee company in the world, <laughs> rips his dick off and eats it. Yeah. And then throws it at him. And then throws it at him. And that. Wasn't bad enough. No. I've seen A Grunt's Life. I've seen both the TV series and now the movie, and there's, it's not that much worse. Rocco has uh, sex with a zombie in that movie. He does, yeah, and Jack has a fucking blow-up doll glued to his dick for the yeah, whole time. for the entire so time. So go to agruntslife.com. Don't let these fucking weak-ass motherfuckers win again. I'm so sick of this cancel and, and, and uh, censorship mm. bullshit. Fuck you, man. We, we had this uh, discussion on Ross Patterson Revolution <laughs> last week uh, about what's, what's happening in the world. And I, look, with all this the pussy society, including the fucking New, Ever, New Hanover County School Board, all their fucking stupid shit that goes on behind the scenes. Like, I, we're in a tiny town. You wouldn't figure shit like that goes on. Um, not only is it going on on a micro level, but it's going on on a macro level where people, they're, they're kind of just conditioning you to take it. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is what we're doing, and then you got to fucking move on with your life. Um, That's why it's so important for people to say no. Yes, but they don't. They don't say no enough. Yeah, and and that's the <laughs> issue. And uh, and it's for one reason or another. And I, I had a, a serious conversation with my mom about it mm-hmm. uh, actually today, and she said, you know, you guys are going real hard these days. Mm-hmm. Are you worried that uh, you'll get ripped from you know any one of these avenues? And I'm like, you know, to be honest, I don't know because uh, if you would have told me this. Let's just say 10 years ago when I was making these fucking crazy ass movies, right? Yeah. I would have said, no, you're crazy. Not yeah. in a million years that'll happen. I keep getting more and more emails as people are going back into like back catalogs of, mm-hmm. of movies I've made. And they're like, oh my God, dude, I can't believe this pool. I can't, I can't believe all this fucking shit. How did you get away with this? And I was just like, uh, <laughs> with Donnie's movie being banned, we're, we're getting there. Yeah. But it's just, all it's going to do 
is the free market always solves its problems. This is America. This is not China. This is not Russia. They're not turning off the internet here, right? It's never going to happen. They're not going to turn off the internet, but, but it makes it hard it, when you no, have to it, go to sites that you're not traditionally it, used it to. It will until somebody creates a site with no rules. But when is that? So this is what we talked about. It's coming. You think I mean, so? Somebody, there's some wealthy person out there that sees this because it's not a matter of right and wrong or somebody's opinion versus somebody else's. It's a, mat- it's a matter of traffic and ad revenue. That's, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's it, right? That's why fucking Pornhub is the, they make more money than any website on earth, despite oh, having yeah. literally the no. most offensive content that you can have. Yeah. Pornography, right? Yeah. And they're making more money than anybody, and it's because people want to see it, and other people are smart enough and ballsy enough to advertise on it, period. Somebody will develop a platform for this shit, and we'll all start using it. So uh, l- let me counterpoint this. <laughs> and there's this, a bunch of them. This, like, is, this is what I said to Jesse on Ross Patterson Revolution. Yeah. <clears throat> I, so... Knowing, look, money makes the world go round and all mm-hmm. this other shit and, and nobody gives a fuck. Let's take the case of Trump. And this is what I said again on, to Jesse was on the case of Trump. No one makes more money for media, news, <coughs> big business, yep. Facebook, Twitter, fucking Google, everything than, than Trump. Why do you want him out of there so badly knowing that you're going to lose oh, they don't. a gajillion dollars. C- CNN doesn't want him out of office. They know this is bullshit. Well, first of all, he's not getting impeached anyways. No. Like, he may face articles of impeachment from, the, from Congress if they can get it even done by then, mm-hmm. which is doubtful because they're all a bunch of knuckleheads. But even if they do, a Republican Congress is not, a Republican Senate is not impeaching him. It's not going to happen. Oh, no. And everybody fucking knows it. Yeah. But all that allows him to do, it's like, uh, you know your friend, like you have a group of friends. One of them is like me. You can talk shit to him relentlessly forever, and there's never going to be any reaction. Like, I'm never going to get butthurt and go take my ball and go home. You know, then, it's funny. Everybody said that <clears throat> about you about the Milo interview. They were like, man, the, the back and forth between you, between Dan and Milo, was amazing, where you can disagree on things without screaming, without yelling at each other, without, yeah. you know. We talked sh- good shit to each other. It was great. It was, it was one of my favorite Like, episodes. we call each other bitches and all this other stuff. It was awesome. I, by the way, I, I, I like that guy on and off camera. Like, yeah, he's a good guy, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I enjoyed the interaction between you guys. He, he's just, he's, <clears throat> he's what happens when all this stuff we're talking about comes forward. Everybody's so sensitive, and he's like, fuck this. Like, he's not a dick. He no. just, He acts like that way because he's fed up with everybody being pussy. In the system, yeah. Uh, anyways, what the fuck was I talking about? Uh, Trump in general, like uh, oh yeah, like they, so, CNN and so you know, there's that one friend though that will get offended. He's insecure, or she's insecure, or there's something going on there where you can't just hammer them all the time. Mm-hmm. You don't really hammer that person all the time, but you know that the one guy you can fucking hammer all the time, he's never going to care. They can hammer Trump all day long, and it's not going to create a power vacuum because they know it's not going to have any real effect. That's what I think. I think CNN and MSNBC know that they can fucking go after this guy hard and destroy him every single day, get great ratings, and not really affect anything because there's no fallout from it, right? Yeah, no, there isn't. I mean, you, you can literally say whatever you want. You don't have to apologize. You don't even have to fact check. Uh, you can just say and do whatever you want. Um, you know, the thing about the UFC fight, because we were watching that on, on last week, Saturday, I saw Trump came, come out. Uh, people went <clears throat> fucking bug fuck, dude. Did you see Kurt Suzuki put a MAGA hat on at the fucking oh, dude. It, World Series great. parade? It's great. <laughs> uh, he put her on in the White House with then Trump. He, then he did the fucking, uh, the, what do you call it? The Titanic. Yeah, the fucking, hug. Fucking uh, back hug. So good. It was funny as shit. So good. But the, the UFC <clears throat> fight, like I, I'm, I was watching that live and, uh, you know, it's him and uh, Dana White that, that come walking out. Yeah. People went nuts as well as I would because I've been in Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. For, for I was I was there for the McGregor fight, and you know what that energy is like, and like yeah, people are going nuts. One guy is in the upper deck, and that's the the video they use. He's booing directly into his camera, and you're yeah. just like, come on, man, uh, it's just so goddamn jaded, slanted. No, these days. that that guy is a hero though. Well, to for to, booing to his friends, yeah, yeah, yeah. A fucking loser. Who yeah. would, who boos other human beings? It wasn't like that at Alabama, though. I can tell you that. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> um. At any rate, I, I think that's what it is. I don't think there's any worry on the left side, at least in the media. Like, they know he's going to be in for another four years. Like, they know it. It's a, it's a fucking golden goose for them. And whatever they yeah. want to tell you. Like, Bloomberg might not care because he's a billionaire. But I guarantee you, the heads of all these failing newspapers, mm-hmm. they care. They better care. 
I, look, they really care. I mean, speak, <laughs> speaking of which, um, there was a newspaper in, I believe it was Salt Lake City, that is, uh, God damn it, man. I don't know if you heard about this, but they're going, not, they're a nonprofit. Uh, and they're saying that's what a lot of newspapers are going to have to do these days to stay in business. And it's like, well, keep printing fake shit. Uh, eventually, people are tired of reading it. So Yeah. Um, if you go nonprofit, then you're accountable for what you're writing to the government. You're yeah. accountable to the government for putting out fake information. If you're a nonprofit that puts out incorrect information, uh, you're going to get governed then by the FCC and a bunch of other laws. So these companies that think they're going to go do that and then keep lobbying bombs at people they're fucking done it's weird my only my uh, only thing after reading that is like man uh, since all these newspapers are dropping left and right uh you're going to be stuck in another monopoly the same way that google and facebook and everything they own mm -hmm. everything uh, apple's got its own news now did you see that yeah Jeez. Get, get, get fucked that's like if uh that's like when a government starts its own news organization. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, oh, it's fair and balanced, brother. Like, no. By the, speaking of fair and balanced, I want, before we move on, yeah. I want to read one of the reviews from A Grunt's Life that somebody sent me this morning. Oh, Don, yeah, Donnie's Because yeah. it's, it's fucked up. Go ahead. Fire away. Um, so, <laughs> you know me. I love fucked up shit. Yeah. So it says, uh, first, first time I've ever vomited with laughter. Spat my food out six times, then shat my pants, then jerked off. It was that good. Ah. Uh, most accurate, fucked up, and hilarious depiction of war. It makes Full Metal Jacket look like a Disney movie. Wow. Yeah, and it does. It's, it's absolutely true. It's fucked up. Um, if Generation Kill is directed by Donnie O'Malley, uh, Generation Kill meets Eastbound and Down, Full Metal Jacket, but ten times funnier. A savage war movie <clears throat> that has you laugh, laughing harder than you ever thought was possible. Now, this is the important part. I laughed at, at parts of war that used to make me consider suicide. That's why I think this movie is important. Yeah. Like to the veteran community. <clears throat> uh, I never thought I would laugh at the worst parts of combat, but I did. I never thought I'd see a movie about the funniest aspects of combat. This made me <clears throat> remember how much I had fun. Uh, we were fucked up beyond belief and we loved it. Uh, and then he jokingly says, how dare you make a joke out of war? There's something seriously wrong with these people. Signed a career Marine Corps officer. That's awesome. Yeah. So this is a Marine Corps officer, by the way, who obviously can't identify himself because he's probably still in. Yeah. But this is the most important part to me. You're not fucked up because you enjoyed fucked up shit. Like, you're in war. The objective is to kill the enemy. Mm -hmm. And you have to... That becomes part of your life. You know what I mean? <clears throat> we all joke about pretty much every part of our life when it doesn't involve shit like that. Um, like, if your kid falls down... Objectively speaking, that's not funny. They could get hurt. But provided they don't, or even after they do and then it's okay afterwards, you're like, fucking idiot. Yeah. Right? There's actually an Instagram page called Kids Getting Hurt, and I watch it all the time. Yeah. Uh, to case in point, a Halloween night, um, I've got a one-year-old, and I, I, I also have a five-year-old. Mm -hmm. They came back after trick-or-treating. <laughs> uh, my wife had took them to the last like half of the route. I took yep. them to the first half of the route. <laughs> My kid is a bruiser, and uh, a lot like the girls at Dan's date. Tough. <laughs> Stands up for anything. Uh, able to take a punch. Yeah. Just and, like uh, your wife. Yeah. Just like my wife. And so 20, you know, 20 kids come storming through the door because we had a little after party at my house. My one-year-old doesn't flinch. Well, they just ran him over, right? <laughs> uh, cried. Uh, <laughs> fell, fell down on the floor. Now, my immediate reaction is, oh, my gosh, I hope the child is okay. Once I realized he was okay. I laughed for a thousand years behind yeah. his back where it was like, hey, man, what did you think was going to happen against you versus 20? Solid. He's a solid kid. Yeah. But the fact that he stood there and took it, it was hilarious. And it's the same thing where <laughs> if you're a strong enough person, right, and you see terrible things happen, mm -hmm. the only way to deal with them or get through it without ruining your life is to inject a little bit of humor into it whether it be yourself yeah or someone else doing it for you is is in the it case is. of donnie o'malley yep so but people get butthurt when we're talking about we're making jokes about killing people and our friends dying and suicide and shit like that people get like you can't joke about that well yeah. first of all i live that i can joke about whatever the fuck i want bitch mind your fucking business go back to your cubicle and mind your business yeah and i'll joke about whatever the fuck i want and me personally, I've had like, I don't know, six friends kill themselves. So yeah. I feel like I'm fine with it. Uh, yeah. I went to their funerals, and uh, I will say this. Like, it, as soon as it was over, I would say 
within an hour after the funerals were over, we had a million jokes. Oh, a yeah. million jokes. So that, yeah. But that's the only way you can cope with something like that because yeah. it's so shocking. That's how you make it real to me. Like, honestly, that's how, uh, like, it all seems like a haze, a fog, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, mm-hmm. um, before you start, before it starts turning into conversation. And you can't, like, if you just sit around and talk about, oh, my friend killed himself, here's why we think it happened. Or you could say, God, can you believe that, you know, this funny thing happened or what a stupid fuck or whatever yeah. the case is. You know what I mean? There's a million examples of that. Uh, and this is one of them. This is a good one. I, I, we talked about this with Matt's book too. Mm-hmm. Just the, the, the comedy behind all the crazy shit that happens over there resonates with people that have been there. And it's an important part, not just uh, for the veterans who are going to see it and, and connect with it, <clears throat> but also for civilians who read it and like, Oh, I see. Yeah. So you're not just a crazy piece of shit. You're there, there's two sides of this coin. Like, yeah, it's it's fucked up, but you know it's how we deal. So I think it's important. Anyways, yeah, and, and it's what it's it's whether or not you're actually able to open your mind and try to understand somebody else's life and their path and what they went through. Um, Gruntslife.com. Yeah. Gruntslife.com. So ch- look, check out the movie. We love Donnie and uh, their look. Their production, everything they're doing over the years. Has gotten continuously better, like leaps and bounds. Oh yeah! And again, that if that last show, because I haven't seen the movie yet, um, but that last show that Jack was in, God damn it, was that good? Um, I mean, that is TV quality good. Where you're like, man, this would it was this would funny. pair up well with with uh, Tacoma FD on True TV. Oh yeah, um, that type of shit. Either who's. We've got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. Yeah. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Monster fan of them. 36 month pay as you go program. No interest. That comes out to about 38 bucks a month on that shit. Uh, whoever got in those Halloween deals, congratulations. A lot of people hit me up and they were like, yo, I can't believe that was real. And I was like, I, I'm going to be honest. I can't believe it either. Um, they're also doing one for Black Friday coming up. So look for that. However, if you were military or a first responder, you get 15% off forever on everything in the store. So those deals last a fucking lifetime. Uh, there's nothing better than a good night's sleep in this life. And, uh, man, with a newborn, I have not gotten it lately. Uh, but at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, you can get yours. Get yourself a mattress, some pillows, some sheets. Treat yourself. For the holidays. What do we got up next, Anthony? Uh, well, let's go with Kill Cliff CBD. Yeah. Uh, Kill Cliff so CBD. <clears throat> it's so good. I don't even have to. They heard the ad read you did on the show you did with Matt, and they were like, what, Matt hasn't gotten any of that yet? And I'm like, yeah, he's not on the show anymore. And he's like, oh, we'll send him some now. So yeah. you're welcome, Matt. You're welcome, Matt. For the free shit. You're welcome. I, look, <clears throat> the thing with. But he uh, should have some because yeah, it's fucking great. Yeah, the thing with, with Kill Cliff CBD it almost sells itself. I feel guilty about it because it's so good that you're just like, hey, man, if, if people find out about this, they I won't know. eat us anymore. <laughs> uh, everybody's buying this shit. Um, a lot of people in Drinking Road Sports, by the way, as a private Facebook group, sign up. We talk a lot of shit in there, but uh, everybody in there, because there's a lot of former athletes and people who played ball and shit. Everybody fucking drinks KillCliffCBD.com. Um that the fact that you can type in the promo code Drinking Bros get twenty percent off and free shipping, it knocks it down to like three ninety nine a can, which is the same as like a can of Monster, except this has got twenty five milligrams of CBD in it, um, and it's also got caffeine. We joke around about ExpressVPN all, all the time about like, yeah. hey, you can bust through the firewall, firewall, firewalls for porn. Yep. For this, you can just I I didn't even think about it because we don't have like a typical nine to five. Although we work, I feel like more hours. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like if I was at work, dude, in a cubicle, I would just be pounding this shit every day. Oh, yeah. If I did deal with some asshole boss or, fuck, man, when we go to these goddamn school board meetings here uh, for the next year. Yep. Uh, we just drink one of these before you go in. You're oh, just yeah. Gonna well, check out um, on, uh, on I'm gonna these be, I'm going to be doing people. a lot of stuff before I get there. Well, look, you can do whatever you want because uh, they've made a joke out of the school board. Therefore, uh, why not have two comedians in there? Yeah, exactly. Uh, by the way, so I had a friend over recently. Um, Everybody takes my kill cliff. Is that what they did? Yes. Yes. And they're like, oh, can I try Every that? And person. I'm like, yeah. And, and they're like, uh, it's got caffeine in it. Can I drink this at night? I'm like, I drink it and then immediately fall asleep. 
Or if it's during the day, I drink it and my day goes on. It doesn't yeah. make me drowsy, but it definitely nope. calms me down and helps me sleep. The best. Best in the business, <clears throat> man. Go to KillCliffCBD.com. Uh, today, promo code Drinking Bros, 20% off and free shipping 25 milligrams of uh, CBD in there. And there's no THC. No. I'm going to show up in a drug test or whatever. Look, I, if you're going to trust anyone, obviously Kill Cliff, Kill Cliff is the biggest brand in the biz. Yeah. Um, and we They're drink also all of their shit. It's always on our desk. Um, we, I, we drink all of it all the time. Uh, no carbs, no sugars. And uh, it is great for after workouts. Yep. And if you don't like it, uh, Baker Levitt's involved, and we'll, we'll fly you to him and let you beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Because we want to beat him up anyways. This, I will say, there's not a negative review. No, Ghost Bed, we've never had a negative review. Uh, Kill Cliff CBD, not one single negative review. On the review. products we do, the only negative re reviews we ever get are like website functionality issues and shit like that. But that's, that's what happens problem, with building yeah. companies. Yeah. We've got a new sponsor this week called, yeah. Hawth it's called Hawthorne. And they do, uh, it's a lot like Dollar Shave Club, but it's uh, better stuff. Mm. So they're, they're, uh, it's, it's hawthorne.co forward slash Drake Bros. And you go in and take a quiz about, how you groom yourself, the kind of shampoo and conditioner stuff I you I read use. about this company. This is like uh, the Bespoke post for that we do, the Box it's, of Awesome. It's like Bespoke. Dot com. It's like Bespoke fucking toiletries, basically. Yes. So, like... Uh, but it's like high-end shit. Very high-end. Like, it, the, the kind of deodorant you want down to, like, do you want it to be antiperspirant that doesn't stain, or do you just want deodorant, or yeah. what do you want? It's, like, broken down like that, and then the type of shampoo based on the type of hair you have and how mm -hmm. often... It's, there's so much shit going on there, and it's actually pretty cheap. You can either you can buy one off, so it's unlike a former advertiser that we had, uh, which is something I never liked about them. <clears throat> this one you can either go, you can make one purchase, or mm -hmm. you can set it up on a subscription. Either yeah. way, yeah, yeah. So either way, it's it's Hawthorne.co forward slash Drinker Bros. Yeah, very good shit. Uh, I've already got my stuff, and it's fucking great. The best, man. I I look <clears throat> that I didn't know they were a sponsor. That's amazing. Yeah, they just popped up. Recently. Really? Yep. Fuck you, dude. There's some times where you see cool shit and you're like, yo, man, that'd be awesome if they were a sponsor. If you just go to their fucking site and take that quiz, go it's go to best. go to Hawthorne.co. Everybody uses that shit. Yeah. They just signed on, huh? Yeah. God damn it. That's amazing. You know, you know, fucking since we're talking about sponsors that we actually love and want them to sign on. You know who I want? By All the, the shit's American made, by the way. Of course it is. That's another thing that of course is, is important yeah. to me. I know this company very well. <clears throat> um, they make fucking high end shit, man. That's awesome. I, they like it's everything. Oh, yeah. You you order like you do one subscription and your deodorant, your body wash, everything. your shampoo, conditioner, Knocked all out. the shit comes yeah. at once. You don't have to go to the store. I I I order everything off Amazon. My I said so do I. I have, dude, I've got five friends using Hawthorne right now. Yeah, and I was like, man, we should reach out to them and get them. That's great that they're on. Uh, the other one, you know, the other one that I love, and I'm gonna put this into the universe <laughs> since we're fucking getting dream sponsors these days. Uh, Natty Seltzer, man. Oh yeah, I like Natty Seltzer. Fuck you. So it's not bad. We've the, been on that white claw life, yeah. right? Uh, this is six. This isn't five. Yeah, and it's eleven ninety nine for a fucking twelve. And I'm like, yo, it's about five bucks cheaper than white claw, and it gets me more fucked up. Yeah. Uh, there was a, bu a bunch of people over at my house for the fight on Saturday night, and um, dude, we crushed like two cases of of natty seltzer. Yeah. I'm not even afraid, ashamed to say it. No. Um, that was, was a the, good fight, by the way. The uh, Lime Marita <clears throat> stop was early. until the stoppage, but uh, the undercard was awesome. That, that UFC fight was rad. Obviously, we talked about that on Drinking Bros Sports, but I'll yeah. reiterate it because I, I, I think there's going to be another uh, <laughs> fight. But, um, there's going to be another Masvidal fight yeah. with Diaz for sure, but also Masvidal is trying to fight. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. He's trying to fight Canelo yeah, Alvarez. Yeah, yeah. We, we chatted about that on the sports show yeah. last week. It's, uh, th that could go down. The Natty Seltzer needs to go down, though, my man. You know another? I, I don't, I sh I'm, I'm going to put it out. We're going to do the secret. Put it out in the universe. Gonna put yeah, it out exactly. In the universe. We're going to put a uh, vision board up for I, sponsors. I'm talking to WeVibe. You know what that is? No. WeVibe is a, uh, it's a wearable piece of technology that you can control from your phone, and your partner wears it during the day. Oh, my. Is this the one that uh, the girl on the cruise had? It's not the same brand, but they make... All of those. It's vibrators, right? And yes. so you can you can control the vibrator through your phone. I really want to get this one done before the holidays because <laughs> I've already look. Those things are great. I want to get them for my friends and, and fucking a gift. Pa and pair my it's phone to it. Yeah, and just like, hey, give me your entire daily schedule. Yeah, and then wear this all day. 
and I'm going to fuck with you hard. We saw a girl have three <clears throat> orgasms in front of us. And her, what, was it her boyfriend or her husband who did it? It was pressing the, uh, the buttons boyfriend, on the phone. Yeah. Anthony yeah. Milsner, that's his name. Well, we don't need and to Her say name that is Taylor probably. Miller. There nope, it's, it's in the cruise. Okay. And okay. If you're, if you're in any of the Drinker Bros groups, you know who they are. Yeah, point, yeah. Because they've been talking about it for a couple months now. Um, but I, we watched her <laughs> orgasm three times on this fucking thing. Um, we tried to hook something up back in the day with Adam and Eve as well. Um, they ended up just sending. Adam and Eve doesn't really do. They do affiliate deals and shit like that. Well, they did send us 50, a box of 50 dildos. Yeah. Which uh, lasted for if you, years. If you remember that video where uh, Matt, you and Matt, I'm talking to the audience. If you guys remember that video yeah. of him and Matt playing in the air tonight and Matt slapping dildos off the wall, that's where those came from. That's where those came from. And then Matt and I did a series of uh, dildo Olympics videos. Oh, the flip. Yes. The bottle flip with where, the dildo. Where you, yeah. could, where you can make it stick. And yeah. uh, those those went crazy as well. But, I mean, those were running jokes you know, for years. Were you, we had those were you there when Matt had the cleaning lady come over and those dildos were everywhere? Yeah, yeah. I, so, so I was there, and then uh, we, what we did, we put a bunch of them in the dishwasher. Oh, yeah. So when she opened up the dishwasher, there was like six dildos on the top next to like wine glasses. Yeah. Where it was just like, oh, you guys were drinking wine and using dildos all night? That's exactly what we were doing. What else would you do with wine glasses and dildos? Yeah. I w- wasn't fucking cheersing myself. Jesus Christ. Definitely getting blasted with dildos and drinking wine all night. <laughs> what an idiot. Speaking of uh, weird ideas. Yeah. Let's go down that hole today. I've got, well... Or up that hole. Uh, <clears throat> I've got some business ideas that I want to run by you and the Drinking Bros. Fire away. Uh, <clears throat> and again, brainstorming. There's no, sure. There's no bad suggestions in brainstorming. Not at all. So I'd like to hear your opinions, and I want to hear yours right now. You bet. Uh, Casey, Casey Anthony Daycare. How does that work? Uh, it's her face on the logo. Uh-huh. And... The threat of her showing up looms over the children to get them to behave. Okay. And now, I'd like to tweak the concept a little bit. Yeah, let's hear it. Okay. Um, the children, uh, you, you would obviously have to, well, you, you, you'd have to have a drive through right? So, so the, the, the children are placed in the car and not in the trunk, obviously? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you'd have to do that. It's like, uh, it's like the old school uh, dry cleaners. Yeah. Now, I, I, I would like to tweak this concept, just thinking about it, just to a daycare center called Karen's. Karen's. And it's just a bunch of Karen's who are controlling your children because mm-hmm. you know they're not going to act up or say shit with the Karen's. Did you see that one Karen <laughs> this week sticking her head Calm through the down. back of the window? Calm down. You bitch-ass hoe. You bitch-ass hoe. Yeah, what 45-year-old white woman says bitch-ass hoe, I by have the way. not heard the phrase <clears throat> bitch-ass hoe from since, a white lady in Since in living color. Probably. 1991. Probably. But I think if you had a, yeah, a daycare center called the, the, the Karens, and it was just a bunch of Karens watching a kid, yep. you'd feel good about it. You'd know that would be the safest place on earth, whereas Casey Anthony, the kids are going to die. That's, a, that's actually as an interesting sketch idea, Karens versus terrorism. Yeah. Uh, so we just drop a bunch of fucking Karen's short win. hair. And yep. some, for some reason in the Midwest, the hair gets shorter as it goes backwards. Uh, they're it's fighting. no fuss haircut in the yes, past, by the way. They're fighting terrorism in yeah. the Middle East. <laughs> Would you watch that? Maybe Vet TV can pull that one off. That'll be uh, a Karen's grunt. versus ISIS. Yeah, that'll be a gruntslife.com too. Uh, uh, that'd be great. Here's the next one. <clears throat> and I, this is a product. This is not a business. Okay. Uh, it's lace diapers for sexually active geriatrics. What do they lace with? No, lace. Oh, lace. Okay. Yeah. That's a nice thing. Like sexy diapers. Yeah. I, I didn't know if they were laced with something like liquid, you know, well, Viagra. You, you or... could put transdermal Viagra in there. <clears throat> yeah. So by the time they take the diaper off, they're good to go. So my only suggestion on that one would be non-white. Uh, the diaper should not be white. Correct. Because you don't want to see the stains. Yeah. If brown goes down, then, then it's like, <clears> hey, man, you're going to. Going through white, you know. I don't know. I think night and white sun. I think there should be some kind of chemical on the diaper that's uh, poop activated. Mm. Maybe not make it brown. Sure. Because you don't want to eat ass if there's poop. But if there's poop, you can still get in the in the pussy, right? Yeah. Like you can still fuck her. You just don't want to eat her ass or his ass. Yes. If you're a gay man, an older gay man. Uh, sp- speaking of ass eating season, <laughs> I want to I want to correct something I said on an earlier show about the exact dates of ass eating season. It's October first through May first. Uh, I think I get a little trigger happy and, and added until after Memorial Day. That's not true. Uh, it is October 1st through May 1st, so I apologize for that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, uh, yeah. so 
<clears throat> there's a lot of extrapolations you could do out this. Mm-hmm. You could do uh, uh, varying transdermal drugs in there. Yeah. Right? Whether it be your heart medication, maybe there's a pocket you order. It's like a it's like a subscription service, right? Where you order your three pills. So mm-hmm. it's a it's a half pharmacy and half lace diapers, and you just slip your pills into there, and it you you get them transdermal. You don't have to remember to take your pills. You're boned up, ready to fuck, and you look hot. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and just call that diped up. Diped up, yeah. Yeah, diped up dot org. I'm a big fan of that dot org. Uh, here's That'll one. Work. This is actually one we've talked about before. It's the uh, Chuck E. Cheese strip club. Mm. So half is Chuck E. Cheese and the other half is strip club. Right? Yeah, it's for single dads. Yeah. Or single moms if you're into that. If, if you're into that, obviously. Yeah. Or, um, if, I mean, like girls like to get together and go to strip clubs. Yeah. Just to have fun. So you can get together with a group of your girlfriends. They have child care in the Chuck E. Cheese. Yes. Kids eat pizza, play in the fucking balls mm-hmm. or whatever. And then, you know, on Tuesdays, it's a, it's a male strip club, so you can go play in balls as well. Yeah, and, you know, you'd only need a guard behind that because, uh, you know, behind Chuck E. Cheese and his merry band of, of players um, on the stage there, there yeah. is a curtain. And, I'm, and you always wonder as a kid and as a parent, what goes on behind that curtain? Oh, it's teenagers getting blowjobs, I would imagine. Exactly. Right? Now we can turn that into strip club. Yeah. And then we can <laughs> cruise back there. In uh, Los Angeles, by the way, and this is a this is a real thing. They served, so really, oh yeah, yeah. So so you had pictures there, and people were getting parents were getting rocked there. Uh, the ones here, the one here in Wilmington, the main one is uh, next to a mellow mushroom, and so the trick here is uh, the parents will dip out to the mellow mushroom, go to the bar, get a drink, and then go back in. <clears throat> but uh, in L.A., dude, when I was there, you could you could get pictures of beer, and it was just fucking mess dude a mess i like that parents were fighting i mean look over tickets for 50 years parents in la were all on pills so yeah. why not booze too i mean mix them up yeah <clears throat> and it, it, i will say this because you, you you would think to yourself oh man that would cause a problem not that many problems the, the nah, we would, we would have bad heard, we would have heard about like it yeah no it wasn't, it wasn't terrible all right, here's another one. Yeah. Uh, it's a, I think we may have mentioned, no, I don't think we've ever mentioned this one before. This is a nonprofit that teaches deer not to walk in the road. Ah, what do you call it? I don't know. No idea? Mm-hmm. Nah, too easy. Too easy. I'm not a big pun guy. No, you're not. Um, I think if you put something <clears throat> on the side of the road, you know, like a nice salt lick. Yeah. That would keep the deer out of the road, right? But the, no, this is a, an educational program. So we capture the deer. Mm-hmm. And then make them watch videos. Yeah, it's like uh, a clockwork orange. So we pry their eyes open. Yeah. And then we show deer walking in the road and we give them a drug that makes them sick. <laughs> if you haven't seen a clockwork orange, go fucking watch yeah. it. You'll understand this joke. Uh, but it, the point is, look, we want to protect deer. We do. So Matt can shoot all of them. Yeah. Uh, I, I, look, I, 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 there is nothing <clears throat> I enjoy than deer meat. Uh, fresh. Yeah. Fresh deer meat? It's Jesus, good. Jesus, man. How do you beat it? But you I, can't. I know El, the Rogan talks about elk all the time. That's real too, man. Well, there I is mean, no meat better than fresh elk. Like, yeah. Uh, technically, those are all deer. Exactly. Antelope, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Uh, what we can, what we think of as a deer, is a mule deer, right? Or an axis deer. It's just a different taste of the meat. But at any rate, <clears throat> this program it's classroom based, mm-hmm. right? So you can use VA funding uh, if you're if the deer's a veteran. You can use your GI bill. Get them in there, or yeah. if you adopted a deer into your family, you can transfer your GI Bill to the deer. Put him in this class; he's not going to hit by a car. That's there are a lot of deers in the military. No, no, not, in this not yet. Not yet. But this is a way to attract them into the military yeah. by providing them benefits. Yeah. Because that's been a problem for years. <clears throat> we haven't I'm had deer. a deer in the military for as long as I can remember. No, maybe ever. Uh, and it's it's racist. Uh, they want to serve their country just as much as anybody else. Yep. And to disallow them the ability to serve their country is, is I don't like it. I, it I, I think, you know who I think would fund this is auto insurance. Oh yeah. USA would, would fund this. There is so many accidents. Like the, the, I saw that video that went viral <laughs> where uh, that chick hit the, the, the elk. Um, oh yeah. You don't want to hit an elk. Jesus Christ. Those things are fucking giant. Car. I mean, it just nuked her car. I don't know what the deal with deer is, but when you hit them, it's they, you don't hit them and then they fly off. You hit them and they roll down your car. 
Like I've never seen anything like that. How do they keep going? My dad fixed cars. Mm -hmm. Like he he owned a body shop, yeah. an auto body shop, and it's in the south, right? So there's deer everywhere, and people are constantly hitting deer. New Jersey as well. <laughs> so uh, we we had a place in New Jersey for years and years and years. And uh, at night on the fucking turnpike, man. Oh yeah. I would I, every time on the way back. Uh, my parents would go to AC or, or the track out there, my grandparents, and uh, we'd go back to Long Beach Island. I always see one car nuke a deer, man. And yeah. it's just the deer are fucking idiots. Louis C.K. does a great bit on this. A deer will fucking see your car coming, look both ways, and then run right into your car. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah. Something what about happened headlights, there? Man. They're idiots. Uh, and this is the last bit. This is another product idea. <clears throat> Which I guess is technically a business. So it's 23 and me, but it tells you if you're gay or not. Ah. Uh, like your relatives were gay or you? You. Well, I think you would know if you were, if you were gay. But it, I'd like to know if all of my relatives were no. gay in my lifetime. You. But I'd still like to know if my relatives were gay. Well, if there's, I don't think they've found a genetic marker for gay yet. I'd like to hold something <clears> over <throat> my, 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 grandpa, my grandfather. You know. How funny would that be, though? Like you find out that he's gay, that he's gay. You're like, he's grandpa, like, he's like no, no. I'm like, I got the sheet right here, grandpa. Yeah, you're a homosexual yeah. man and you've been hiding this whole time. Now it's time to come out and it's also time to suck a little dick in public. You show up at your uh, grandfather's house and you've got like three male prostitutes with you. <laughs> you're just trying to do something nice for grandpa. And he's been living this cage life yeah for this, for this forever just trying to raise his family and do the right thing that he thought was the right thing and all this shit but no and that wasn't the right thing you should have been sucking dick this whole time and we brought you some dick to suck yeah. or get your dick sucked by a dude either way but some gay shit's going down grandpa. yeah because uh, because with your grandfather have you ever had a gay talk with your grandfather uh no my grandfathers are both dead okay so when my grandfather <laughs> was alive because well i got one alive one one dead right mm -hmm. um he was in the navy oh so he May have, I, may, have, asked him. may have dabbled. Asked him. So he was in World War II. And uh, I asked him about that. I was, like, I was like, Grandpa, I was like, there's a lot of dudes on that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and I was a younger dude, you know? I think I was in college when I was talking about this. Um, and at that point, any or all of your friends that are in the military are still in basic training or they're overseas or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't tell you these stories, so you don't know about it later. And I was like, ah, but I just asked, just figuring it out. I said, Grand Grandpa. You were, you were in the Navy. You were stuck on this. It was on a submarine. Um, and they used to circle the equator. Yeah. Or whatever the fuck it is. Um, well, I, that would be the, the world if they were circling the equator. No, but there was a, a, time, a time zone change that they would go back and forth, like over by Australia. The International right? Dateline. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is, right? Uh, not big on math. It was in the Pacific Theater. Or science. Yeah. And uh, it was like, you had to have. <laughs> you're, I mean, you're so far away from everything. It's prison. Just it's a prison bunch gay. Of dudes yeah. on that boat. Is there a chance? You're he at, was never more angry at me. Than, you're at than, least jerking off with other dudes, because right? porn was not ubiquitous back then. So what were you doing? You weren't going eight, nine, ten months a year without pounding off, right? So, so what were you thinking about? Do you ever pound off with no supplementary fucking media? No, no, no. one. No, I mean, we're used to that now, but back Absolutely. in the day. How did I, here's what I want to know. I want to have some boomers mm -hmm. and then some whatever the fuck were before them, mm -hmm. greatest, greatest generation people, discuss masturbation. I do too. Because what were they using? Exactly. What were they using? Also, <laughs> was it shamed enough? Because this is what I thought about after this conversation. This is a real conversation I had. Um, after this conversation, I thought, was it shamed enough that maybe you just didn't do it? it was it one of those things where it was like, hey, you fucking jerking off, dude. I'm sure it was shamed. You fucking jerking like, off. Remember, even when we were kids, there was that yes, that That's myth. What I'm talking about that yeah. myth about your your palms getting hairy if you jerked off. Th there but was a, there was a bunch of things, right? If your palms could get hairy from jerking off, you wouldn't even be able to see me right now. No, yeah, you'd be fucking Teen Wolf, <laughs> one through one through two, one through two, yeah. Um, but uh, no, there was there was a stigma around it. I remember in like seventh and eighth grade. It was like, you fucking jerking off? And it was I remember like, the first time. I, I know you do. I thought I was like, ooh, what's happening here? Yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. pounding off because it felt good. Right. Didn't know what I was doing, right. obviously. Who does? No one does. Because uh, no one ever talks about it. Uh, that's why Derek Whitus says he's going to teach his kids to jerk off. Wow. When they're old enough. Uh, so, about 12 years, we're going to see Derek White. Time is fucking, ticking. Derek's going to be in jail in 12 years. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. excuse me, sir. Why are you guys all three got your dicks out at a fucking movie theater? Like, look. 
the chick's hot. My kids don't know how to jerk off yet. Two birds, one stone. Let's yeah. do it. And, uh, and then Derek will be in jail, uh, <laughs> which is fine. Whatever. He's a tough dude. He can handle it. Yeah. So I, <clears throat> with that, I wonder if it was shamed upon and like it wasn't a big deal. Whereas I feel now mm-hmm. with the you're able to get porn and access to porn all the time. If there's not just a like a jerk off renaissance going. I, on right I wonder if uh, a jerk off renaissance. I like that. Yeah. I, I wonder if our grandmothers sucked dick as much as our like. Uh, contemporaries do like was there as much hmm. dick sucking i doubt there was as much pussy eating because back then it was all macho bullshit all the time dudes didn't really care if girls got off or whatever the fuck so i doubt there was a lot of that going on but dick sucking has got a it's been around for a couple thousand years you know yeah i wonder if our grandmas were just chugging dong i don't know how that was I'm, right now, I'm doing research on the 20s for the uh, the new St. James book. If there's any uh, grandmothers out there that want to come on the show, hit us up and talk about sucking dick. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. Yeah, we we would we would love to have you. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully that vibrator company signed on by then. Oh man, I, I fucking hope so. We can leave you with a smile. I'm sending him a uh, pitch deck today. But uh, do, doing some research on the 20s, yep. it seemed like everybody was sexually promiscuous. Yep. Uh, Cocaine you could still buy from like doctors and yeah. shit. Yeah, but what were they doing sexually? Yes. Like, was That's there a lot of I anal and blowjobs? Yeah. How how did that shake out? Because then you go back to like <laughs> Deadwood, right, and that type of shit. Yeah. With, with like whorehouses where you could do anything. You're riding a horse all day. Chances are your butt stunk, and then you know you could just get sucked off. And then I leave feel and like there was a lot of and... there was a lot of pinched nose blowjobs back then. Can you imagine being a guy back then and you fucking developed a device that held the nose closed? Yeah. Just that little nose pincher thing that swimmers wear, right? Or are you used to it? Are you used uh, to that no, stink? There's no getting used to that. There can't be, dude. Huh? There's no fucking way. There's no way. I don't, that's, I guess people that have deployed for long periods of time got used to jerking off in porta shitters that, were, that had four days of shit in them. So maybe. Maybe. But putting your mouth on that would be an entire separate. I situation. wouldn't rule it out. I try to, I try to shower up, make sure everything's clean. Like I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why do wipes do it, exist. Just do it. Yeah, exactly. But some people don't give a fuck. Where they're just like, yo, this is my stink. I'm a man. No, I'm getting my dick sucked. There's a difference between uh, having a nice coat of of sweat on you mm-hmm. and a little fucking not bo, but just like you know, man smell. Yeah, and your dick and ball smelling like hot garbage. Like, there's a wide gap between those two fucking things. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not comfortable. I wouldn't let a girl suck my dirty dick. It's disgusting. Nah, it's gross. Because she's going to put her mouth on mine at some point, and I don't want to have that image in my head. Yeah, and then you've got to hang out with her the rest of the day. And she's not using your toothbrush. <sighs> yeah. Then you got to talk to her. Then you got to smell your own dick in her mouth. Yeah. And it's like, here, eat a Hot Pocket. Do something to get that out of your, get that out of your mouth. One girl one, said to me one time, uh, women have said a lot of funny shit to me mm-hmm. after sex and before and during whatever. She said, my breath smells like tortilla chips in your dick right now. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> and then uh, uh, one woman said, uh, "Don't." And this is the first and only time I've ever heard another human being say this, and I can't believe it because it was so fucking funny. Hold on, let me... I, I, wrote it down did I you think. actually write it down because it was really funny let me find it let's see I, let me ask you this I, I, after going down on somebody has a girl ever said hey can you go wash out your mouth no i've no. had that that's it's just like hey man fuck no i was down there you'll be fine that, that's that's what i said yeah. like oh no it's just like i you don't brush your teeth i don't make a girl go brush her thing? teeth it's after like, she sucks my dick the I don't. A mint is nice, and a mint's a polite. A mint's always nice, though. Yeah. Uh, the woman said, "Don't ever put your naked dick in me again." <laughs> I've never heard another human being say that in my entire life, but that's funny as shit. That's great. Referring to it as a naked dick was yeah. really funny. That's, a, that's uh, a that's a bold move. And then we fucked like eight more times after that. Where is she now? Uh, she's dead. Is she really? No. Oh, I was gonna. I, that'd be awesome. <laughs> why? Why would that be awesome? This is a great end of the story. Oh, well, that, oh, that girl that I made love to eight times that day? Well, she's dead now. I think all the women I've had sex with are still alive. I don't think anybody's died. Really? Yeah. I mean, <sighs> people that were alive at the time are still no, alive. I, I, there's, there's, there's a couple of dead ones for me. Really? I'm just like, oh, yeah. I was just like, oh, RIP, you know? Did you show up to the funeral? <laughs> no. 
No, and she'd be like, ah. Oh. You print out all the fucking text messages that she sent you and nail them to the coffin? Yep, and just say, look, we boned, and I'm here now. <laughs> and I feel like I was a big part of her life. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. No. Yeah. I just, no. I just showed up to the funeral to make sure that I didn't have any kids with this chick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but she's dead, right? Yeah, she's gone, There's so I'm good. No, we're good. All, I'm all clear here. Good. <laughs> I'm all clear here. Yeah, chances are in this life, right? Somebody's, somebody's had to have kicked it. I don't think so. I, I really, I'm, I'm pretty sure I still know every woman I've had sex with. That's creepy. I, I don't, I don't like, I don't have their numbers on speed dial or anything, but I could right. find them if I wanted to. And I've not heard about any of them being dead. Hmm. And I feel like I would. I don't, I don't follow anybody on Instagram or Facebook. Well, or, not like that. No, you know. I, I just know what their names and. Okay, cool. What they're doing? Not really what they're doing. No, but I, I feel like I would have heard if they were dead. Yeah. You ever had somebody reach out in desperation of like uh, they got divorced or? Oh yeah, dude. All or a the husband time. died and they're like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my four kids. Uh, no, not like that. No, yeah. no one would make that offer to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? People, I only have sex with people I know. Yeah, and they know me too, right? As a result of that, so yeah. they, would, they would never do that. Somebody said that to me once. I don't know what I'm doing with my four kids. And I was <laughs> like, it was somebody who was super hot, and uh, I was I didn't date them in the past. I was friends with them. Yep. Um, and they it just turned to me in this weird like moment of vul- vulnerability, and was just like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I've got an like, idea. I go four kids. It's like I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> you know what she should do is take them to the uh, Casey Anthony daycare. Yeah, you get them all diaped up and let them let them run around. Yeah. Uh, weird thing about her is this is a true story, and we're probably going way too deep here on a Friday night for this type of shit. Wow. But uh, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I remember thinking to myself, and it, like I it, I went through all the motions of it. I was like, man, she still is very attractive. She's very hot. So how I, how old were the kids? I think she'll probably get remarried. Oh, dude, go to Salt Lake City. Kids were between one and eight. Um, it's too young. Go to, uh, Salt, ah. go to Salt Lake City, uh-huh. and you will find hundreds of 26 to 30-year-olds, gorgeous, like 8 to 10s, with 3 to 4 children. Really? Recently divorced. Now, I'm not saying I've had sex with a lot of those girls. Mm-hmm. But you've had sex with a lot of those girls. None of them ever ask me to be their fucking parent or the parents to their children. Sure. Though. Like, I don't think they suffer under any delusion. As a matter of fact... <clears throat> most of the women that end up getting divorced did so because their husband was crazy, mm. like super controlling and shit, and they're just done with that. So I don't think, I don't know. I don't yeah. know, but I banged a lot of them, so that was fun. Well, homegirl got, she did get married. She, she did get remarried. Um, what's I'm, her name? I'm friends with her on Facebook. What's her, what's her name? I'll, t- I'll tell you off air, and then you can look her up. Oh, I'm going to. Because um, she's a great person, <clears throat> and that's the thing is like. Oh, so I shouldn't try to fuck up her life then. Well, she's already remarried now. And she's, that doesn't. No. Come on. She was always super nice, faithful, all, all of that shit. And we were, we were genuinely just friends. Um, not that I didn't try to have sex with her in high school, but because uh, I definitely did. But um, uh, super nice person and unbelievable. And I was like, oh, man, I felt terrible. She told me a story at the time. But I remember thinking the first thing that popped in my mind, I was like, well, she's still really hot. There, there, somebody will do this. Yeah. And it was less than a year later, so. Uh, she seems to be perfectly Well, you happy know what the thing it. they say is that uh, people who are happily married, if their spouse dies, they usually get remarried really fast. Do you know that? I did not know. Well, uh, with kids or without kids? Either way. No shit. Because yep. they just they enjoyed being married so much. People that hated being married and their spouse dies right. or were ambivalent to it usually stay single for longer. Huh. Like th- there's some God. I wish I could, I wish I could remember it now. I enjoy being <clears> married, <throat> but it's because of the person I'm married to. You know what I'm saying? You say that, but if you were raising two kids by yourself as a single dad doing work like this, oh no, I'd, you'd I'd, be looking for a bang yeah, maid. Yeah, a bang maid. By the way, yeah, that's from "It's Always Sunny." Oh, uh, is it really? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. So with, with two small children right now, yeah, I'd, I'd remarry in like a month. Yeah, Jesse knows that. I think <laughs> <laughs> she will tonight when she, she will went. after the show. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I would definitely be like, oh, I need some help here. Uh, yeah. We get a. A- I think a bang maid would be a good. So it's like a bang maid is be- basically the, the domestic version of a Russian mail order bride. So a bang maid is a maid who you bang, lives in your house. Yep. It's it's like uh, everything except for a relationship. I get that. She watches the kids, mm-hmm. maybe has a couple, mm-hmm. but you guys are never in you know 
no responsibility to her except Absolutely. for a paycheck at the end of the month. Or whatever her visa <clears throat> is, obviously. Well, no, this is domestic. Oh, all right. You want an American for this. Because you don't want that really? hanging. No, see, I'd like to take stuff like that off the table immediately. Okay. Um, that way there's no hang-up of like, oh, like, hey, you're, the rest of your family, the 26 members of your family are right. going to have to move here afterwards? Not, not even just that. I, I want to take it off the table for, for her and me. So here's an example. <clears throat> if I was like really interested in something long-term with a very rich woman, I would, I would say let's sign an NDA right now. I don't want, or not an NDA, but a fucking prenup. I don't want any of your money. Let's enter this thing on equal footing. You keep what you brought in, and I'll keep what I brought in. It's not about that. Okay. Take that out of the equation completely. Then, over time, I forge some documents. Right. <laughs> and then murder her. Yeah, obviously. Like, she's the one that decided to change that. It wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. And I then, was fine with And then she shot herself in the back of the head with a nail gun 80 times. <laughs> it's like... I don't know why. That's a weird way to kill weird yourself. Weird way to go. She was a big fan of uh, that movie with uh, Homeboy. You know? Oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which movie is that? The Oscar winner. Um, oh, fucking uh, Javier Bardo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She was a big, big no Bardo con- fan. No Country for Old no, Men. Yeah, no Country yeah. for Old Men. <clears throat> big fan of that. I couldn't figure it out. I was always playing. Anyways, nail gunned herself, and she's dead. So here we are. That makes me think about what if I was... What if I dressed like a cowboy, and instead of a six shooter on my hip, I just had a nail gun? Yeah, and and a, I have a cigarette and I'm just walking through Midtown New York, murking people. Like sta- the... No, no, just just intimidating people. Okay, and like every now and again, I reach for my fucking nail gun, put up some drywall, and then walk away. I think all Home Depot employees should walk around like that. Oh yeah, because people get rowdy at Home Depot. Oh yeah, that song makes me fucking rowdy. Which song? The Home Depot theme song. I don't, you can you can hear it in your head right now. I can't. Every single audience member right now is listening to the show. Goes they know the fucking Home Depot. What, what is it? Uh, it sounds like steel being hit. I don't watch commercials. Google much. Home Depot dancing. I posted a video of it on my Instagram, <clears> and uh, and you'll see people doing fucked up shit to the Home Depot song. Um, that's all I'm saying. Well. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I, somebody got offended the other day. I wanna, I wanna, the, speaking of fucking man and rich and all that shit. Somebody got offended. I posted Kirill's picture. And I think you did too on your story. I was up late and it made me laugh to no end with the old man fucking that younger woman. Oh, yeah. And it just it's said, hilarious. when she has, I love to travel in her bio, but, but you know she doesn't have a job. Yeah. There was a few friends that I lost who definitely did that. That's all they do is... is <laughs> Marry or, Look, or date older men I don't, and they travel around the world. I'm not world judging you. Work. That's a great hustle. And it's good for, it's literally good for everybody involved. You're getting to go do cool shit. Yeah. And he's getting to hang out with a super hot younger woman and maybe fuck you. I don't know if you fuck him or not. They do. You have e- to. Either, either way, even if it's just like a fucking sugar daddy. Like most sugar daddy situations, they're not actually fucking. Right? Like 80%, ah, I would say. If you go to the fucking Baltic, you know. Baltic Islands. You, you, you gotta, at least give him a handy or something. Something like that's just that's politeness at that point. Suck off. But but that is an, a win 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 situation for everybody involved. You're getting to do cool shit. He gets a fucking he gets to fuck some hot younger girl. You get some money on the side. That to me is a perfect situation for somebody like that. For, yeah. For both parties. Yeah. Why well, why be offended when somebody calls it out? It is lost what it is. a few friends. Well, lost a few friends. Here's a, here. Do you want to hear? Uh, by the way, I had a dude who did it. By the way, one of my buddies. He was into older women, and then uh, one of the studio heads got, I'm not going to say who it is, but they got divorced, <laughs> and uh, she got fucking 60 mil, and uh, he, was, he was her massage therapist, mm-hmm. and then she was just like, look, man, I've always had a crush on you. You want to just say fuck it and get married and mm-hmm. travel the world? And he was, he was a struggling actor, never done anything, and he was just like, yes, I do, and he did it, and he's the happiest I've ever seen him in his entire life. Well, I'm going to read... A review of Drinking Bros podcast. <laughs> since, no. you're, since you're talking about people that are pissed off about stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> somebody, somebody pissed off right now? So this is from a user called uh, Jack, J-A-C-Q-U-E-O-B-E. Okay. So Jack O-B. I don't know what that means. Jack O-B. <coughs> Maybe it's Jacoby. Maybe. Uh, if that's your first name, then you probably shouldn't be watching this show in the first place. Jacoby, yeah. However, uh, <clears throat> still got two car, t- two stars. Huh. Uh, and it says, needs. the title is Needs a New Co-Host. 
Ah. Okay. So one of the greatest podcasts of all time. It was extremely funny with a heartfelt realness behind it. Uh, unfortunately, the core people left due to business reasons and abandoned the community that helped. I guess it wasn't that heartfelt then if they quote unquote abandoned the community. <laughs> Sorry about all the coffee and content they give you, bitch. Shut the fuck up. Do you know how much free content Black Rifle still puts out uh, and, and the millions of dollars they give away to charity every year? Fuck over you. Over and over. What are they? They're doing something now. They're giving a bag away to. Buy every, a bag, give a bag. Dude. Every time a bag is bought, they give a bag to the troops. Yeah. yeah. Until the end of the fucking year. So get yeah. fucked, Jacoby. Anyways, um, they abandoned the community that helped to create those opportunities. Now we are stuck with Ross trying too hard to make up for Dan's constant vulgar narcissism, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which makes it really difficult to simply enjoy the show. As long as Dan is a co-host, I, can, I can't wholeheartedly recommend this podcast anymore. Still got two stars, though, so eh. it's not all bad. Hey. Why take the time to, to write that? Because their name's Jacoby. I guess. Is that a is that a man's name or a woman's it's name? It's really funny. I don't ever review anything unless it's like I hate that person till the nth of the earth. Um, but then it's a one star. Yeah. So why the two? I'm not really sure. On that <clears throat> well, one. They, it seems like the person still likes you. So maybe you should check Ross Patterson. Re- not really. Revolution. Yeah. For not, not uh, really for Jacoby's. No, I, well, look, we don't get that very often. But when we do, it's funny, man. Like I, I, I love you, bad reviews. You want your. I, <laughs> Well, the fucking goddamn sponsors read them is the problem. Um, I I love anyone who who goes out of their way though is like that heated about something to to write a review on it where you're like ah oh, fuck you. Um, I I do it if I absolutely hate that that thing that's going on and um, but it it has got to be the end of the, uh, of the earth and it's a one star. It is never a two, obviously. Uh, and the other thing about that is is like dude. You, you should want all of your friends to be as successful as they possibly can be mm-hmm. in this life. Um, look, man, you're the, Evan and Matt are the face of a global, global coffee company that is helping fucking thousands and thousands of veterans. Like, what more could you ask for out of yeah. those guys? This show is free. Nobody's asking <laughs> you to listen to it or write a review on it. Like, you know, it's I, a free show. You can turn it off. I don't mind. I think it's, I mean, look, I want people to express their opinions. Uh, and I look, there's a guy on YouTube after some of the gun debates. He's like, every time I think I like Dan, he fucking says something that pisses me off. I'm like, look, if one and if one comment is enough to make you hate me, yeah. then fuck off, dude. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like he's like, he, he also ended up making that. Well, I'm assuming it's a dude made the comment that, um, uh, that civilians should have access to everything the military does. Nope. So I'm a civilian and I can tell you no. You so should not. We're gonna get you an M1 Abrams tank. Uh <laughs> some fighter jets, couple of nukes. Shut the fuck up, dude. No, I if, can I can tell you I don't know what his name is, but I can tell you uh <clears throat> it is the same as anything else in this life, right? Uh you have to have a, a, co- a commercial license to drive a truck. You have a to have you, you gotta have a license for a forklift, dude. Yep. Come on. Uh, uh I do not need access to a tank uh, <laughs> just because i can doesn't mean that i should have it yeah um if i had a fucking rpg <laughs> in my house chances are i would accidentally blow up my own family and probably my neighborhood <laughs> i do not need one of those no uh but I, uh, the jacoby with hand at least the J- jacoby person that's a that's a fair assessment that's how they feel about sure me that's that's cool <laughs> i don't mind that actually because i don't like everybody and, and, and everybody doesn't have to like you there's no reason for the it. the other part about it too is before we get do you, to, do you want to be the kind of, of person that everybody likes yeah eh, why not I, I, I don't care either way um but i will say <clears> this when you start to get to an audience of 6.4 million people it is impossible to please everyone all of the time. Here's all I ask. And it's free. I, it's not serious XM where you're paying to hear yeah, them yeah, yeah. jamming this in your face. Like, uh, Therefore, it, look, you can never please 6.4 million people. Here's what I ask. Make it funny. If you're going to talk shit to me, make it funny. It's, it's easy. I give you plenty of opportunity. I say all kinds of stupid shit <laughs> all the time. I act like an asshole all the time. Fucking say weird shit about me. Say make, whatever you want. Dan doesn't care. No, I don't care. Say crazy shit about me, please. For Christ's sake, I want that. Yeah. Like the only time I'm ever jealous of anybody else in media is the the mean tweets thing, because that is so goddamn funny. That's great. I not just re, like <laughs> whenever there's a great burn it's on those. The things. only thing that Jimmy Kimmel does <clears throat> right is those mean yeah. tweets. It's like Corden. The only thing I enjoy is carpool karaoke on that show. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't even watch the rest. Of I don't show. even know who that is. Uh, you've seen the carpool karaoke though. Obviously, those clips. Mega. I mean, Mega. He's, he's a fat British guy. Yeah. Uh, let's get to the drinking bro of the week, shall we? We're going to keep it in the theme of this weird-ass show we've been doing today. 
Uh, I'm going to give it to my grandfather, Blair Patterson, in World War II. You never, I never got the answer to that question of whether Blair or not. Patterson, possible homosexual. Closeted. Possible closeted oh, no. homosexual. Or maybe he just dabbled. Like, how many dicks do you have to suck before you're gay? Uh, I don't know, but I, I have a cousin who's gay, and he did, he did, did not like my cousin, so. Um, I don't yeah, but that's how it. That's how it works. Could be right. Yeah, it could be like American they're self, Beauty. They're self-loathing, yeah. so they hate gay people. Yeah, it could be like American Beauty, where it's like, you know, or it could be like that pastor who died in a fucking latex suit with a dildo up his ass. Do you remember that guy? Yeah, oh yeah, big fan <laughs> of his work. Yeah, well, th- especially at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so to my grandfather, who fought bravely in World War II. Um, I don't know if you were or not, but. Uh, he did not understand my humor, I don't think. <laughs> um, and he was not alive for e- either of these books, to uh, When Darkness Falls or uh, while, while At Night She Cries While He Rides the Sea to come out, because if so, he would have definitely abandoned our relationship. Oh, yeah, you would have. He, he may have killed you, actually. Yeah, so he, look, he lived to be like 88, so we're good. We're good on all that. Uh, but Blair Patterson, cheers. <clears throat> cheers, buddy. Good for him. Uh, love you. Love you. Uh, Dan, weird show. Yeah. Was- Fun show. Looking forward to running for the school board. Um, this is going to be hilarious. I mean, obviously not for the people that are on the board. These people will get uh, horrifically terrorized for, well, a year, Really a year just probably. for our own amusement? Uh, no, I, I will say this. I'm fucking serious about this stupid shit. Like, um, I'm angry that this happened. Um, I'm angry that it happened in a small town. If I was in a big city, like if I was in L.A., mm-hmm. fine. <clears throat> That's the reason I got out of L.A., so I didn't have to deal with this stupid shit. And then you come down here. You realize you got these fucking uh, backward politics. It's like a fucking episode of Bloodline, for Christ's sakes. And you're like, yo. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. It's really weird how the smallest amount of power imaginable can go to someone's head so quickly. It's crazy, right? Like, what do you mean I'm the hall monitor? Shut the fuck up then. And I, can, I run what, these halls. What we'll get to say in these meetings to these people. Oh, like, man. Oh, Behind be... closed doors? Yeah. Like, you can't censure me for using profanity no. to another adult. Can't do anything. It's not the, the bylaws. And I'm going to try to pass some weird bills. <laughs> we're trying to, we're, we're, we'll try to get teachers paid more, for Christ's sakes. Um, that would be job number one. Fuck, man. Like the mo- I bought, you know what cops, I did? Cops, EMTs, firemen, and fire people, whatever the fuck, I don't care. Firefighters and teachers, we can't, if we can't pay these people, let's just give up. For real. Let's just let's just call it a wrap on yep. the country and start over. Give up on life, man. I, I was at <clears> uh, fucking Office Depot the other day, just picking up some paper, and mm. there was like three teachers in front of me trying to figure out how to put their school supplies on like nine different cards. And I was mm. like, you know what, ladies, I got it. And they were like, are you joking? And I was like, no. I was like, you're, you're teachers, obviously, right? And they were like, yeah. And they were like, we were going out of pocket for these. It was like it was like markers and uh, construction paper and poster boards and shit like that. And I was like. This is fucking crazy, man. I was like, just here, put this all in my card. Um, and it wasn't much. You know, mm-hmm. It was like 100 bucks or whatever it was. Um, and it was just like, mm-hmm. God damn it, man. If that's where we're at, that you're, you know, these teachers have to pay for this shit on their own. Like, for real, I, I, I am actually amped about this, man, to get inside this and see what it's like inside the system and then report back to everybody. Because, again, I, I think that's why that episode did so well and, and resonated with so many people was uh, – uh, nobody has a voice that's able to get on this shit. We do, and we'll mm-hmm. get in easily, and we'll nuke out two of the three people that are running. Um, but I am I am very curious to see what happens behind the doors, <coughs> and if you really are able to change or not change things, because we talk a lot of shit on the news and everything else. And like, I'm I'm curious to get actually in it and see what it's like, and then be like, all right, you can make a difference, or you really can't, and here's why. Yeah. But either <laughs> way, we'll get to share it with you guys uh, once a month. Because uh, the, the, the meetings are only once a month, and we'll get to go, and then you go behind closed doors and, and discuss yeah. all of it. And, and again, we have no special interests. So I certainly don't. No. I, 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 I care and know a lot about these. I care about and know a lot about these issues. Same. Because and, and, I want to live in a country with fucking smart people. Yes. And, 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 and people any, who are amped to do their jobs. And, like, dude, if you're a teacher out there yeah. or a firefighter, a police officer, like, clearly – you love your job because it is definitely not for the fucking money. You know, the average teacher in America spends somewhere between five hundred and thousand dollars per school year per nine months on supplies for kids in the classroom. I get it. I I, I ran into three teachers there. That is a true story at Staples, man. And, and um, that that's that's office depot. That's nationwide. You're talking about people that make thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year. Ugh, brutal. Uh, either way, we're gonna get the answers <clears throat> next year. So um, we'll be able to tell you and then tell you what's actually going on and what these 
what these budgets are. The average and what starting salary, their fucking money on. The average starting salary for a teacher in North Carolina is thirty-seven thousand dollars. God damn it! Get fucked. That's awful. Do you want somebody that's near the poverty line teaching your fucking kids? No. God you know, people damn, People are happy dude. to be there. Uh, we'll, look, we're gonna win this, and we'll get to the bottom of it. Um, you can help us with a campaign and buy these T-shirts. We're gonna get those out out into the world yep. very <clears> shortly. <throat> for Anthony, Anthony Holloway. I'm Ross Patterson. We're look. We're about to be the two new members of the new Hanover County School Board. Uh, the the primaries are in March. Our paperwork is due December third. So we will keep you updated on that. We'll be having a party here at our office, which we'll set up an event for that. And uh, I think we're gonna have a chili kickoff. Yeah, if you're in Eastern North Carolina, come on by. Yeah, then if we'll you're at you- Fort Bragg or Fort Lejeune or anywhere in those anywhere areas. in Wilmington, you will be <laughs> voting for us. We will be voting for you on your chili. So pop on in. Uh, we're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everybody. Good night, Jacoby.